Thursday afternoon, David Parkin could finally say he did feel accepted and at home. He'd coached Carlton with the VFL flag in his first year and had helped the Blues equal Collingwood's 23-year-old record of 13 premierships. Parkin has the distinction of playing in a premiership side, captaining a Hawthorne premiership side and now coaching both Hawthorne and Carlton to premierships. He's been Today, we welcome the premiership coach of 1981 to Channel 7 as our World of Sport Sportsman of the Week. And in just a moment, he'll be talking to Bob Sk Well, David, exactly. How did, well, not how did it feel at five o'clock yesterday, how does it feel now? Probably better than it did at five o'clock, Bob. I, I always felt as a coach that the, uh, particularly when you believe you've got the players to do the job, I think we did have the best players at Carlton. Almost every premiership since about 1958 has been won by the best group of players standing up. And I think when you understand and realise that, there's a bit more pressure on, because if you lose the... Uh, the acid supplied to the coach because he hasn't been able to get the best out of the best players. And I think, like most coaches would say, it's just a relief. Twelve months and two days work has uh, finally seen uh, born fruit. Doesn't always happen that way. Is there any difference between the feeling at, Hawth at a Hawthorne Premiership and the feeling at a Carlton Premiership? <sighs> That's a pretty difficult question to answer. I think as you know, because you've been to a couple of clubs too, the, the players, the people who you work with most of the time, sure you work with the coaches and with the administrators, not so much with committee, but those very close to the team tend to be the s similar sorts of people. I can find similar sorts of people at Carlton playing similar sorts of roles and I can find the same people at Hawthorne. I think that feeling um, is generated in all football clubs in similar situations. I don't think the actual feeling on the day or in the aftermath like today is any different between one club and another. It's been said that you felt that you're an outsider for quite some time. Uh, is this right? Just in the sense, Bob, if you, if you had been at Hawthorne for as long as I had and, uh, and knew the place and understood the place, they are... If, Carlton's up here in the way they play and organise, administrate, recruit, market themselves, publicise themselves. Hawthorne are down at the other end. They're almost um, opposites as far as their approach to foot, even the way they play. You know, Hawthorne, it doesn't matter how little we score as long as the opposition scores less. And there's a bit of that there yesterday too. Um, and Carlton at the other end, it doesn't matter how many they score as long as we score more. And I think the difficulty was for me to... Um, come to grips with the two differences and I think for a long time I was talking a language which really the Carlton players and the people of Carlton didn't understand and it wasn't until I modified my approach, it took a long while for the penny to drop, I'm a bit slow up here, um, that we, football. yeah football, yeah, a blonk, um, that, it, that, we, that we started to get our act together and it was a fair way into the season before I thought that we were making some inroads and having Carlton play not there and not there, but somewhere where football should be played in the middle. You had the knowledge that Collingwood had beaten you twice this year and, uh, and once last year, so the last three times you'd played they had beaten you. 21 points up during that third quarter, could you see it slipping away at that stage? Yes, I, I believed that... I say that the games are won by teams, and uh, that's probably so, but when you've got a game as tight as that, six goals apiece about halfway through the third quarter, something like that, um, it's going to take a, an enormous individual effort by somebody to lift a side. And I thought William Smother and goal was a fantastic effort, nearly as uplifting as the Bazasto effort the previous week. And I thought if we didn't score the next one, then we really might be out on our feet. Now, fortunately, we got two goals with ease, actually, at the end of the third quarter. There wasn't, it was the only time during the game that there wasn't any pressure applied to the Carlton players in those efforts to score the goals, whereas Collingwood had, they were magnificent in their, in their prevention work. They were fantastic, as good as they were at Princess Park in the first round when they annihilated us. And I thought at that stage I had a feeling that they'd, they'd lost their run a bit. There were players not sort of getting their hands on ours, falling over in an attempt to do it where they'd been staying on their feet. And I went to three-quarter time convinced if we kicked the first one after the start of the last quarter and it was a tragedy really that we got free kicked at the bounce uh, and the mark to Stewart at centre half forward I thought that might have clinched it but we were fortunate in that we rebounded it and got the goal that we needed which I think encouraged our players enormously and then we really did have the legs I think the press had said a lot during the week that Collingwood if it got close would win the game because they have those fantastic fighting qualities but in fact, I believed it was close in the finish. We'd have to win because we had every player fit 
I mean, not carrying injuries, which obviously Collingwood players were, not in, in great extent, but they were obviously carrying things from the previous week. And we had the running, because I knew, I tested these players, they are the <coughs> best runners in the competition, and I knew if it, it came to a bit, it was who going to run further, that Carlton would be able to outrun Collingwood. And fortunately, uh, my judgment was vindicated. So you, you were really happy to have that uh, week's break? Oh, look at it. The, it for, the, gr the, be the greatest thing in final series is to be able to get all, if you've got good players, to get them all standing up and available. You know, if you want, you want your best talent to pick from. And the two breaks gave us that. It gave us a chance to get Perovic up for the first one, and it gave us a chance to get Ashman up for the second one. And I think if you've got your best player standing up, they will perform under duress in finals game. And I think that was a great advantage. Football clubs uh, as a team, from the trainers up uh, win premierships but uh, the efforts of two players uh, I'm going to ask you to individualise you've got your captain in Mike Fitzpatrick and that wonderful defender Bruce Doole I'd like I'm particularly on Michael's behalf for a start and I think I've said it already once that six weeks ago we played Essendon he broke a metacarpal in the back of his hand and it was pretty painful and Michael was in a, an emotional mess before we went out into the ground that day against Essendon and for the fact that he didn't think he could take the pain to catch the ball and put his hand on the ball and he didn't think he'd be able to give the leadership that we required in what was going to be one of the most important games of the year. We lost it, as it turned out, it helped us in one respect. But from that point forward, Michael Fitzpatrick, his playing performance and his leadership was second to none. And he, he really did direct the side, he controlled the midfield from half back to half forward in the corridor as well as any player I've seen over that length of period. Didn't falter once in those six weeks. And I think, talk about man know thyself, I think Michael came to grips with himself at that time and will be a much, much greater player and captain for Carlton, I think, because of it. I think that was terrific and he carried it out again yesterday. And Bruce, of course, um, he, he seems to have the ability to come up game after game and week after week. <clears throat> and his finals performance has been nothing short of magnificent. And uh, it's very good to have those kind of players. No fuss or bother, terribly capable people, the Bruce Stools of football. Well, thanks very much, David Parkin, and congratulations on a wonderful effort in uh, le leading Carlton to their premiership. Thanks uh, David, uh, as Bob said, congratulations. But uh, on behalf of World of Sport, you get all the kudos as the players do, but the wives miss out sometimes because they do put a lot of work in, and your wife's been a great help to you on behalf of World of Sport. We'd like your wife to accept this magnificent silver salver and also these crystal goblets. And also, for a bit of fancy cooking, the Mulanex Whiz. I think that'll go well in the kitchen for your wife. I think she'll be pleased about that. And of course, we'd like you personally, because this is a great bag from Tosca to carry your suitor, because you're possibly going away on a player's trip at the end of the season, be able to put all the gear in that. And something else, you've worked hard yourself. Your wife works, uh, works very hard. This is a complimentary weekend uh, at the Mildura Country Club and I think you'll both enjoy that because it's a great place to stay. Thanks and once again, much. congratulations and I think uh, the wife will be very happy about it.